In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Good morning. It's wonderful for us to be together. I take the opportunity to welcome you, especially those who have traveled to be here as we gather for this Chrism Mass to bless the holy oils used in our sacramental celebrations, and also for our priests to renew their commitment to priestly service. I'm grateful to each one of you for your efforts, for your great love for the people of God here in the Diocese of Savannah. I also welcome those who are joining us via the live stream, and I'm grateful to you for taking this time to make it a holy and sacred time to hear the Word of God and also to be able to make a spiritual communion with us. As we begin, we look inside of our hearts. We ask the Lord for pardon and peace, forgiveness for the times we have failed Him, failed others, not lived up to be the champions He has called us to be. In a special way today on this Chrism Mass, I also ask for your forgiveness. If there has been a time that I, as your bishop, have not been present to you or have not been able to meet your expectations, I ask for your forgiveness and always for your prayers. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
bow our heads and pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God, you shall be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. And all who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. 
Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord our God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. As we gather here together today, I once again extend a warm welcome to you, my brother priests, deacons who are here with us, seminarians, perhaps seminarians in the future, and you, the faithful, the people of God whom we are called to serve. 
I welcome you here to the beauty of this cathedral basilica, which is the mother church for our diocese. And we don't, do not have a lot of opportunities to gather together as brother priests. So really today is something that is very special for us, especially during these sacred days of Holy Week that we are strengthened in our own vocations in order to be able to lead the people of God to a deeper relationship with him so that we may have a hope-filled Easter. In a special way today, we pray for those who will be coming into our church at the Easter vigil, those who will be receiving the sacraments of initiation throughout the Easter season. And today, as these oils are blessed, we pray for them, and we are grateful that God has called them to be disciples here in South Georgia to be able to live their baptismal call, that they may be able to work out their own salvation through building the kingdom of God here and now. Last Tuesday, I had the opportunity to visit one of the churches in our diocese that I had never been to. And I don't know if many of our priests or people perhaps have been there. It is a very obscure little parish somewhere between Millen and Sylvania, and it is called Bay Branch. And there is a small little wooden church there in the honor of St. Joseph, the patronage of St. Joseph. A regular mass is not celebrated there every week. There is no running water and there also is no HVAC. However, and it was a bit of a chilly day, there is a stove in the sanctuary to warm. I'm glad it was March and not July when I was there. There is electricity, so a fan would have been most welcome. After the Mass, I did take the opportunity to go walking through the historic cemetery. And it's still a place where people continue to be buried, some of the legacy families in that area. For many years, for decades, it was the only church between Augusta and Savannah. So you think about that very large expanse that there is, and that is where the faithful gathered. The church was built in 1911. And I bring this up because when I was there, I was reminded of all of those who have served here in our diocese throughout the decades, that since our own inception in 1850, the many good and holy priests who have loved the people of God, who have celebrated the sacraments, whose hands were anointed in order to be in the image of Christ and serving the people of God, so that not only they know that they are loved, but that the priest himself would know that he is loved and appreciated. I can only imagine a hundred years ago what ministry in the Diocese of Savannah was like, but we are grateful for those who have gone before us and we stand on their shoulders. We do not walk in their footsteps, but rather we take a new view, a larger view, in order to look to the future. Today, as we do traditionally at the Chrism Mass, we honor those who have some special anniversaries. And so today I want to make special mention of Father Lewis King, who's celebrating this year his one-year anniversary. Congratulations, Lewis. We have a couple that are celebrating five years as well, and that is Father Theodore Agba, Father Peter Lanshima, Father Solomon Kanan, Father Casey Cole. We're grateful to you, brothers. You are no longer part of the junior clergy, but you now graduate to medium clergy, I guess we would say. Father Vernon Knight this year is celebrating his 10th anniversary, and our silver jubilarian is Father Peter Oyanuba of the Missionary Society of St. Paul. Father Peter is not here with us today. He's recovering from some hand surgery and wrist surgery, so we pray for him, and I am sure he is watching on the live stream, so we congratulate him. Forty years, we have a few priests who are celebrating, and that's a significant anniversary. That is Father Gabe Cummings, Father Nick Mansell, who also is not with us due to health reasons, 
and Father Frank Zimkowitz, one of our Benedictines here, is celebrating his 40th anniversary. Our golden jubilarian is Father Tom Payton. And Father Payton, we congratulate you in a special way in your golden year, and I know that you will have many more golden years serving here at the Cathedral Basilica in thanksgiving for the gift of your priesthood, your witness, and also you have, how you have helped to guide some of our younger clergy in their journey as well. I, I know they are very grateful to you. And I know that there are others who have anniversaries in the 50s, the 50 plus years, but I do want to make note of Bishop Boland, who this year is celebrating 65 years of priesthood. Why don't we congratulate all of our special anniversaries. <laughs> On the day of your ordination, gentlemen, your hands were anointed. Deacon Francisco, we have about two months until you will be able to have that beautiful opportunity as well to say yes to God in service to ministry as a priest in our diocese. And an anointing is something that is ancient. It is something that sets someone apart for a special service or for a special responsibility. So my brothers, we were anointed, our hands were anointed in order to help serve in a sacrificial manner the people of God. Our readings today also speak about the anointing of the prophet Isaiah and Jesus as well, who proclaimed from the scroll, which was presented to him there in the temple of his hometown. And he read from the scroll and he spoke about how he came to be able to bring good news to the poor liberty to captives, sight to the blind, and to proclaim a year of favor. My favorite part of this scripture is when he rolls up the scroll and he says, today, today, this scripture is filled in your hearing. In other words, something special and great is going to happen. And they had already seen it. The crowds were starting to gather wherever he went, and he was also saying to them, come and follow me. Because in the human heart, we all want the best for our brothers and sisters, especially those on the peripheries, the poor, those in need of healing, the incarcerated, those who are in need. Jesus came to help lift up the dignity of all people, especially those who are the least, the last, and the lost. But that word today, I think is especially critical. It doesn't show up too often in the scriptures. On the night that Christ was born, we know that it was to the shepherds in Shepherd's Field, just outside of Bethlehem, who were told, today in the city of David is born for you a savior who is Christ and Lord. When Jesus visited Zacchaeus's house, he said, Today, salvation has come to this house. When he was on the cross, he looked at the one next to him, and he said, today you will be with me in paradise. So we get a great sense that Jesus, when he says, today, the scripture is filled in your hearing, there is an immediacy. Jesus is not just some figure that we read about in scriptures, he was in time and space fully human, fully divine, fully for us to be able to follow in his footsteps, to be able to model our lives on the mystery of his cross. When it comes to the sacred scriptures, I always like to look what comes before and what comes after. So Jesus was saying, today this is fulfilled in your presence, but what did he do yesterday? Well, Previously to his going to the temple, he had some pretty wonderful things happen in his life. He was in the Jordan in chapter 3 of Luke's gospel, and he was baptized. When the skies, the heavens opened, the Spirit was sent down and said, You are my beloved Son, in whom my favor rests. I can only hope that for those who will be baptized into our faith, coming in at the Easter Vigil, that also you will feel that great sense 
of being a son or daughter of God. I am sure that the baptism of Jesus was an extremely joyful event, really a beginning of his public ministry, and he showed the way for each one of us to find the way, the truth, and the life. But it was from there that he went out into the desert, and he went from a high to really kind of a low when the evil one, Satan, was tempting him. I think that that really shows to us that in life, there are highs and lows. After Jesus himself proclaimed this scripture in the temple, what comes after the scripture, we see as well that our Lord, the people were amazed at first at what he had said, but then they got angry because he tried to challenge them and they were not really interested in being challenged. So they were angry. They ran him out and tried to throw him off the brow of the hill. But somehow, he escaped. Somehow. Why? Because the grace of God, because the Father in his relationship with him, because he still had an incredible mission to fulfill, that he was able to go forth and not be thrown over that hill but rather his own destiny was to be on a cross on that Good Friday. So we see in the sacred scriptures and in the life of Jesus Christ, whom we are called to model ourselves upon the mystery of his cross, we are able to see highs and lows, a range of emotions. And I think in ministry, that kind of describes our own call. I know that those who are in the vocation of marriage Every day is not a wedding day. And probably you know that, and maybe thank goodness it's not a wedding day. But every day for us is not an ordination day. As a priest, we walk with the people of God in order to be able to be with them in the great and incredible joys of life and when the spirit is alive and present, but also in the sadnesses as well. As the oil of the sick today is blessed we can pray for those who are ill, some whose illnesses are not seen by the eye, but who can be refreshed, renewed, and have hope for what the future may bring because of the ministry of the priest whose hands were anointed with the sacred chrism. Pope Francis knows of the challenges that we face as priests and at an international conference for the ongoing formation of priests, he said, we need priests who are fully human, fully human so that we can walk with the people of God, capable of healthy relationships. Brothers, we are not created in isolation, but in community, and mature in confronting the challenges of ministry. Yes, there are challenges but how do we make it through those challenges or difficulties? It is through a life of union with our God, and it is through a life of prayer. Our lives make no sense unless we are men of prayer, unless we are called to a sense of holiness, to be able to unite with God, converse with Him, to pray the liturgy of the hours, to feel the gift of his mercy in reconciliation, to be able to preach the good news. And sometimes it can be very challenging. Sometimes it can bring incredible and great joy. But we are reminded to have a balance between prayer and work. And God needs us, my dear friends, my brothers. God needs you. The church needs you. I need you. The people of God need you to care for their hearts, their minds, and their souls, and to be able to help them to get to the kingdom of heaven one day, to be able to be in that place where he will be able to shower upon us incredible graces. I know that sometimes in our lives, parents feel this way, grandparents, husbands, wives, priests as well. 
Maybe we feel as though uh, we have a thankless job and do what we do make a difference to people? I want to tell you that it does. One day, a man was working on a cathedral in Europe. It was being built years ago, decades ago. And he was there working on one of the beams that would go way, way up top. And he was there carving something in the beam. Spent hours doing this, very diligent. I'm sure his coworkers were not happy with him. And one of them finally came up and said, what are you doing so busy there working on just one part of that beam? We have other things to do. And he said, I'm carving a little bird in the beam. I'm carving a little bird in the beam. Can you see the wings and the feathers and the eyes? The other man said, why are you wasting your time on that? It's a beam that's going to go up way high on the roof of this church. Nobody's going to see it. And the man said, God will see it. My dear friends, please know that God sees. God thanks us. God knows our thoughts, our words, and our actions, and he is very grateful whenever we are able to bring people closer to him, that we who are anointed to be his sons and his daughters, those who have been called into through baptism to build the kingdom of God, please know that the Lord is grateful for every act of discipleship that occurs. And we may never know the gratitude here on earth for what our actions may do, for what our good deeds will produce, they may never ever be recognized. But they will be recognized one day when we stand before our God, when he looks into our souls, taps us on the shoulder, and whispers into our ear the seven words we should all long one day to hear. And it will be the greatest act of gratitude when he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. At this time, I invite my brother priest to please stand. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day, when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Amen. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ, the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by the zeal for souls. I thank you, my dear brothers, for your ministry. I thank you for your goodness to the people of God most of all for loving them and for building the kingdom of God here in South Georgia. I invite the people of God to please stand. 
As for you, dearest sons and daughters, I ask you to pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And also, my friends, pray for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Sacred Chrism. O oh God, Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, Everyone anointed with this oil may be as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit, freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. O oh God, strength and protection of your people, who have made the oil you have created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil. And grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters. They may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the Church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise, as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch, foreshadowing the gift to come in the last days. All this has been clearly revealed. When every offense is removed through the waters of baptism, the anointing with this oil causes our faces to be joyful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten Son, And you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in song, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness, and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name it has received the name of chrism, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. (laughs) Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, And by your wondrous design, you were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption to set before your children the Paschal Banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the Word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, Kevin, our Bishop Emeritus, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. <coughs> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. We beseech you, almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before we conclude, I once again extend my gratitude to all for being here today always for your prayers. May these sacred days of Holy Week be able to bring you into a closer relationship with Christ, that you may have, once again, a hope-filled and a peace-filled Easter season. I know that these days are especially um, something unique for us as priests and for us to be able to be renewed. So gentlemen, I hope that we leave here today going forth to proclaim the goodness of God to serve his holy people, and also to love them always to the best of our ability, and also to remember that little bird up in the beam that is there, that maybe no one else will see it, but God will. Please know that I pray for you, for your loved ones, and for your intentions. Please know I ask if you would please remember me and all who serve our church in your prayers May we meet each day in our prayers. May we rejoice in the Lord always. Yo oro por ustedes, por sus seres queridos y por sus intenciones. Por favor, oren por mí, por todos los que sirven aquí en la diócesis de Savannah. Que nos encontremos cada día en nuestras oraciones y alegremos en el Señor siempre. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. The response to each invocation is amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his kindness upon you and give you his peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Speed to God.